guys, it's Rob Marenghi here. I uh, just wanted to talk to you today about what I think teachers are doing wrong. So I've been a teacher for maybe 16 years, uh, about nearly eight of which have been in schools, primary and secondary schools. I've been teaching music primarily, guitar, ukulele and piano, but I'm also a teaching assistant in some schools. So I've seen it, and I've been in hundreds of schools now, across East London, Newham and Hackney. Um, and I've seen absolutely phenomenal teachers, and I've seen absolutely terrible teachers. <laughs> and maybe I'll, I'll take a very short amount of time to summarise what makes a good teacher. The very best ones I've seen stay completely calm all the time. They genuinely care about the children's well-being in education. They're wise in the ways of the world, so they know how to handle certain tricky questions and comments that may come up. Um, they have an effortless aura of authority, but not in a totalitarian sense where the children are afraid of them, but the children like them and respect them, but at the same time know that there is a line in the sand and if they cross it even by an inch, they'll be held to pay. Calm held to pay, but you know, in you know, something they won't like, like losing playtime or detention or something like that. Um, a very good teacher is knows when to have fun with the kids and knows when when to stop. Okay, so bad teachers, which is why I wanted to get onto mainly. Bad teachers treat children who are far more intuitive and sensitive and intelligent than they are often given credit for. Anyway, they treat them well, it's an expression, they treat them like children, but they <laughs> they treat them like a five-year-old, so. So, a teacher gets a kid in trouble unjustly, which can happen, you have 30 kids in the room, some of them are, me are messing up your lesson, you can occasionally blame the wrong person for that. But, say they do that, and then the kid, say 10 or 11, as I witnessed quite recently, tries to defend him or herself. The adult te the teacher just shuts it down, says that's talking back, no talking back. Go and sit at the back and here's your punishment. And the kid gets angry or cries and they're not treated like an autonomous, autonomous individual. Bad teachers lose their temper. They get very irritable and yell really bad teachers take out their shitty lives on the kids and say overtly aggressive or passive aggressive things and become a bit of a bully you know they're saying how you can judge someone by how they treat the people over whom they have power well an unfortunate amount of teaching i've seen has been has proved Has proved that have proved their character is lacking. Let's say. Another one is, they don't talk to children like they are adults, which children love. Like they, they want to be spoken to in the same tone of voice as you speak to an adult. And you, I think there's, there's been studies on this where adults naturally speak to children at a level that's slightly beyond. The children's comprehension if you know what i mean so you'd be speaking to them and throwing the odd occasional big word to make it quite obvious what it means or what the kid can ask what it means anyway a, a bad teacher or bad parent i get or any role model children starts talking like this and says are you okay are you okay like that and <laughs> the kids could smell it a mile off that fakery and that makes them sort of shut down and go on autopilot and give sort of kind of fake responses Anyway, the best person I've read on this is Carl Rogers. He's one of the great 20th century 
psychologists. His books have got unfortunate titles. They sound like really cheesy self-help books, but they're not. Like on becoming a person and, and stuff like that. Anyway, he pioneered client-centered therapy and student-centered teaching and person-centered relations. So the idea is, with kids, as with anyone, you... Whatever mood they come in with or say something with, you totally accept. They come in angry or irritated, you, you stay the same and just let them, let them play it out. Because the minute you react, not only do, not only, well, there's about 10 ways in which everything goes wrong after that. You know, they get angrier, you get angrier. Normally other kids like to see it and it puts a stress on everyone. People stop learning, it stops being fun. That's five, but the, I'm sure there's more. Yes, you completely accept them. You listen to them very, very well. One thing he said was that as well as just listening to someone of any age, intently, without judgment as much as you can, is to try and figure out why they're telling you the thing they're telling you. And if you practice that for a while, it can be surprisingly effective and he's he was saying through de decades of of psychotherapy psychology at the top of his game that was the most effective way to aid someone's psychological mental and spiritual growth just to listen without judgment and completely accept them and then in return to be totally honest with them like if, if they make you feel anxious or upset or scared or happy or, you know, you tell them. There's obviously grey areas and <laughs> caveats, especially when it comes to children. You don't want to be completely honest. You know, what did you do on the weekend? Oh, I, you know, don't quite remember. I'm now nursing a come down. No, um, you got to show tact. But I found, I've seen children transform over a few weeks once I once I learn this and you're just you treat them like a friend you know you're completely honest and open with them and that alone along with the listening is the best way to facilitate a child's growth now the education system does throw spanners in the works obviously and gives teachers an insane amount of admin to do and parents evenings and progress reports and end of year reports and crazy amounts of planning and marking uh, and other things as well. Going on plays, things like that, <laughs> the kids and things like that. Uh, Bertrand Russell, in fact, said adults shouldn't spend more than four hours a day with children because, they're, because they get irritated and then it becomes counterproductive. So I understand why there's a 50% dropout rate in the first year of the school direct courses for teachers. And I understand why adults lose their temper but I think there's no excuse for it because I, I still vividly remember very dark memories of teachers who were hostile to me or were taking a disliking to me for some reason and it didn't take much of a negative attitude and language to um, deeply upset me at that time because you're so uh, sensitive and impressionable and you don't know what's normal and you you know if an adult's angry with you, you think, well, I must have done something wrong. It can't be anything to do with them. So yes, I think a lot of classroom tantrums and friction would be solved if when the kid got a bit worked up, the adult didn't respond by getting worked up themselves. You know, just, just throwing petrol on the fire. Whereas... If you can let the fire go for you know five seconds, six seconds, it often peters out of its own accord. Now there'll be extreme cases where, and I've worked in classrooms where this has happened, where the, the kid has some kind of issue, and they they become violent or they throw themselves into the wall and start screaming. Again, even then, I think it's best to let it let them do it for a little bit. Because more often than not, they stop. But yeah, if it carries on and they start hurting another kid, 
or punch you, then you have to get them out of the room. So. What else do teachers do wrong? If you're a teacher watching this, I'm, I'm not judging you. Uh, well, I sort of am, but I, I understand how demanding the job is. Um, and I'm just, just trying to help you. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I think I'll leave it there. If you're a teacher watching this, I would say try and be mindful of your irritation levels and anger levels and try and keep it under check. Or, you know, the Carl Rogers approach, just say to the kid, oh, you, you're you making me feel quite, um, not angry, but you have to word it very tactfully. You make, you're making me feel a bit upset the way you're behaving. Um, I'd like you to stop. Be amazed at how well they respond, most kids, to just a reasonable, honest request instead of just yelling at them, which is more often than not what's done. Just yelling, stop misbehaving in my classroom, blah, blah, blah. And then it's not like the kid sits down and starts smiling and goes, oh, I didn't see it like that. You know? Yes. Okay. Rant about teachers is over.